Hi everyone! Today I decided that instead of repairing all the hardware I wanted to actually use it. So I decided to play The Secret of Monkey Island by LucasArts um, Lucasfilm Games. So this is a real classic and it's made for the Amiga. Uh, as it says here in the corner it says Amiga 500 and 1000 and 2000 requires 512 kilobytes of RAM so that's exactly what I got in this machine uh, you saw in my earlier video I uh, installed the memory upgrade module well I uh, removed that one and put it in my Amiga 500 plus instead so this one actually oh it says up here actually I have I always forget what uh, what I'm doing so uh, Looks like I have two megs of free memory. Well, <laughs> yeah, I did. I put it uh, back then because I thought I still had this uh, memory upgrade in my plus. Well, well, nonetheless, uh, mouse uh, and joystick required. Mouse or joystick, and I have uh, here the Amiga original tank mouse. So yeah. As I said in my earlier video, I love the design of this tank mouse. I think it's fantastic and I would uh, love to have a kind of USB adapter so I could use this on modern machines and bring it to work and uh, everyone would look at it in awe. <laughs> well, when I open this box I get a s the entire game uh, distributed on a set of four floppies here, four floppy disks. And these aren't your uh, regular uh, PC floppies. You see there's, instead of two holes, there is just one hole. So it's um, 
uh, instead of uh, high density floppies, it's double density floppies. So it's, uh, I think. And, and, and besides that, it's Amiga formatted, so it's a different format altogether. I think it's uh, for Amiga, it should be 840 kilobytes for one floppy. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, yeah. And uh, if you want to save the progress in your game, you can install uh, a hard disk in your computer, or if you have an Amiga 600, it already has a hard disk. But I don't have a hard disk, so I formatted a floppy earlier. Uh, first time I played this game, well, I played it uh, on an old Macintosh first, and then I decided I want to play it on the Amiga. Uh, and I forgot to create one of these save floppies. So when I wanted to save the game, I just entered a normal uh, PC formatted high density floppy into the um, floppy bay and it didn't work and the entire <laughs> system crashed. So this time I got a properly formatted floppy so I can save my progress. I will not be able to finish the entire game in one sitting because it's a very long game. Uh, besides that, you get all the paperwork in a nice little plastic bag like this. So that's uh, keeping it in mint condition. I really like that. Uh, first off, you get your little card here, which is a quick introduction on how to play and load the game. Uh, which uh, keys to use. Uh, it says uh, basically that you need to insert a floppy into the computer and things like that. Secondly, you get this lovely manual, all in black and white though, which uh, tells you the lore of the game, the backstory, and uh, about the menus uh, in-game and how to use them. But you really don't need to read this because it's uh, the game is very self-explanatory, so as you will see, uh, a modern gamer would instantly recognize how to use the game without reading this uh, manual. And uh, third but uh, not uh, least, you get a very early DRM kind of scheme called Dial-A-Pirate. And the idea here is that you should match up the head with, uh, there should be a pin here in the middle so it uh, spins. Uh, you should match up the head with the chin of uh, different pirates. And uh, depending on which one you match up, uh, different numbers appears in these uh, little, uh, well, boxes here at the bottom. So there are different names of different harbors here, like Tortuga, Jamaica, Barbados, and so on. And it might say things like 1615 or 1773 uh, or uh, 1611 or, you know, different years. So the idea is that you spin this to match a pirate that appears on the screen. And, well, you will see how I use it also. But you spin it to match up so the figurehead uh, matches. And then you look at the proper harbor and read the year from there. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I need to do is to insert the first floppy here. And disk number one is right here. So let me insert that one here, like so. And let's take this away. Yeah, so the monkey one uh, floppy appeared here. Very nice. Let's open it. And I l really like this said said uh, waiting <laughs> thing. Uh, in modern computers you might see an hourglass uh, or uh, something like that, or a spinning uh, ball. Uh, in case of Mac OS X when you're waiting, but here they had this said said it's like the computer is thinking. I really like this very big icon also. As you can see, I can install it, but that is for computers that have a hard disk drive, and this computer doesn't have a hard disk drive, so I can just play it off the floppies. And I really love this. Uh, it's very big and very detailed, and when I click it, it opens! <laughs> There's a second monkey inside screaming, so it's really nice. So yeah, let's uh, double click it to start it. 
and let's see what happens to the camera. Yeah. So by now uh, I should get this dial pirate ready. Oh, and by the way, when I bought this game, I got these little notes from the previous owner uh, inside here. And I guess this is uh, cheat codes. But I d I'm not going to use them because I want to experience the game as is. So yeah, that's it. Mm. It's loading, still loading. And... Uh, well, the is making a lot of noise. Let's lower the volume there a bit because it's a horrible noise. And the flop is uh, making lots of noises. It's just like you saw when I started up uh, the workbench, the operating system. Uh, yeah. Before we begin, let's have a quick history quiz. So this is the DRM, the copy protection scheme, because. Uh, there was nothing that could um, stop you from coping the floppies. But if you got the floppies and you didn't have this disk, you couldn't play the game. So, uh, here I have a guy with black hair and sort of very big uh, eyebrows. Uh, and then I have some kind of monkey chin, I think. Um, it should be... Well, I found the head. And the chin is... Oh, which one is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah. So, uh, as you can see here, I have... Uh, where is it? There it is. Yeah. Now, is this the right one? No. This is not the right one. Ah, this is the right one. Like so. So this is the right guy with uh, yeah, the top of the head. And then here is the right uh, chin, which is kind of a monkey chin with uh, white hair on the sides or something like that. And then I should look up Barbados. And for Barbados, it's uh, right down here. It says uh, uh, 1563. So when was this pirate hanged in Barbados? I should enter 16, no, 1563. So let's try that, 1563. And the floppy is again making lots of noises, so I think it's an accepted answer. Let's hope so. And I should actually put this box here while I'm playing so that you can see it. Yeah, now it's uh, nice and visible in the camera. And now the volume, I can raise the volume a little bit. As I said, the uh, audio isn't the best, but uh, that's uh, how it was. Really catchy. And of course, uh, whenever you play a game that is very long and you need to think a lot, you need coffee. <laughs> and I must say that the picture is pretty good. Um, of course, it would be a little bit better if I used the proper RGB monitoring monitor, uh, the one that you saw in the beginning. But if I use that, I can capture the video. And there might be some delay also between the sound and the audio uh, because of this capturing setup. I will try to fix it in editing, but I can't promise anything. Uh, another thing. I need to mention is that uh, I'm recording this uh, uh, so this game uh, I am recording the capturing the output on my uh, stationary uh, desktop computer while the webcam that you see me and I'm recording that via my laptop and the reason for that is because then I get moved around the webcam 
get to a very nice angle. I cannot do that with my stationary computer. So, uh, yeah. Uh, where, where was I going with that? Yeah, so there might be some uh, delay between uh, what you see in the game and what I expect. I really guy, love how this guy, uh, Guybrush Treat, just sneaks up to the lookout and say, Hey, I want to be a pirate. Just uh, cautiously like that. Uh, even though pirating was a criminal offense, <laughs> he just boasts about uh, wanting to become a pirate. It's just like if you nowadays uh, go to someone and say, Hey, I want to be a terrorist. Uh, <laughs> it, it wouldn't work. And this uh, Outlook guy just uh, tell uh, Guybrush Tripu to, to go to the uh, Scum Bar. And I really like the name of that bar as well, the Scum Bar. It's really funny. So this is the little intro. Uh, like a cutscene in the beginning, so cutscenes aren't anything new. Uh, they existed back then as well. Here comes part one, uh, the three trials, and you will soon see why it's called the three trials. So first off, I need to go to Scumbar, as the look up, uh, lookout uh, told me to do. Uh, so this game is uh, really simple. Uh, this is my mouse cursor that I'm moving around right now. Yeah, now the cutscene is over, and uh, if I click here, he just walks over to there, if I click here he walks over to there. And then I can use uh, these actions down here, so I can open things, close things, push, pull, and so on. So if I first click at look at, then you see the blue text here, it says look at. And if I hold it here, it says look at poster. So if I click, then he goes to the poster and look at it. And similarly, you can uh, use open if you want to open doors, or pick up if you want to pick up items, and so on. So that's uh, how you use it. Uh, there are also shortcuts uh, for these. So instead of say clicking here and say open, um, let's walk first. I can just uh, press O on my uh, Amiga 500 keyboard, and it switches to open like that and uh, open poster, well that doesn't work. No. Uh, I don't use the, I haven't tried the key, arrow keys, no. I cannot use the arrow keys for walking around, so it's a point and click adventure game. So I have to click wherever I want to go. This isn't really an action game. Um, it's more a fun game or a funny game. There's a lot of humor in the game and lots of jokes and things like that. So it's a, I would say, a feel-good game. Uh, yeah, now I'm inside the scum bar uh, and uh, the floppy seems to be loading. Yeah. And once again a really catchy tune. I will lower the volume just a little bit, like so. And uh, yeah. I can talk to these guys, uh, so if I press T, I think it's talk to them, yes. talk to pirates. And here, uh, yeah, I don't want to go to that one, I'm not talk to them. Okay, can I talk to these guys instead, maybe? I want to show up uh, the graphic capabilities of the time, so yeah, here we go. So this was very difficult to do on a Macintosh, and it wouldn't be done in color. And uh, in DOS, maybe you could pull it off, but once again, it was... Well, you had EGA graphics, so you didn't have as many colors as the Amiga had. So, this was very nice for its time. You can see here on Guybrush's shirt also, you have all this shadowing and things like that. So, so it's a really uh, fantastic computer. Yeah, I, I uh, admire the Amiga. Uh, 
and I just click on the conversation. Uh, and you see that the pointer disappears whenever the conversation is going on, so I cannot do anything. Uh, to load and save and things like that, I press Ctrl C, I think it is. Uh, no, I don't want it. Uh, something like that. Uh, that's why you have this little paper card, so you can actually uh, look up how to save, how to quit, and uh, things like that. The mucus music <laughs> is really funky as well. I really like the music in this game. I can't remember if the music was like this when I played it on the Macintosh. Um, when I played it, I played it on the G3 uh, iBook. Uh, which, uh, as you Macintosh nerds might recognize, has a very nice uh, design to it. It was before the old white uh, Apple design, it's a very colorful computer. So I want to talk to these uh, guys here. And I will ask them if I can become a pirate. Because that's uh, what the Outlook uh, guy said to me. Go and talk to the pirates in Scumball and uh, here they are. The pirate bosses. Uh, I don't want to kill them now. Uh, although they will probably just laugh me off and say, haha, you cannot do that. Uh, because in these conversations you cannot really get it wrong. Uh, and if you get it wrong, you can always start over. Uh, it's, I think it's one point in the game where the game actually locks up and you have to start over because the conversation went wrong. But that's only at one point and all the rest of the game is... Uh, you cannot screw it up. So they want swag and they want grog. I can agree. So here are the three trials. Uh, just the name of chapter one is three trials. Uh, here they are. I must master the sword, the art of thievery, and the quest. And here you can uh, continue the conversation to clarify what uh, each of these are. Uh, I will probably do it for one of them, but uh, I already know what the quests are, so I don't need to clarify it. But I will just uh, show how the conversation continues if you want to clarify it. Uh, once uh, once uh, all the three quests are done, uh, they promise me that I can come and uh, drink with them. So, I want to know about the art of uh, Tiberi. And it says that I must procure the idol of many hands from the governor's mansion. And that is very crucial crucial information for you because you don't know where uh, what to get or where to get it without asking these pirates. Unless you have played it uh, this game, of course. So play this game before, of course. Uh, in which case, you already know what to do. And the art of sword is basically you must uh, defeat the sword master and the uh, treasury hunting is, well that's a sort of a big thing you need to do, yeah, you need to follow a guy into the forest and uh, uh, he will show you where the treasure is. Uh, uh, you can see that one also, tell me more about that. So this is the Meili Island, Meili Island, Meili Island. Uh, and I love that I put the trademark off it. <laughs> uh, and here they kind of tease me and say like, uh, oh, of course you need a treasure map. 
and remember that X marks the spot, <laughs> just like uh, in a movie. And then they laugh at me and say, you cannot find a treasure without a treasure map. Uh, but anyway, uh, I must be running along now. So the first thing I need to do, I don't remember 100% what to do in this game, because uh, it was a long time since I played it, but I think I should go into the kitchen first, or I might need to wait for the cook to come out, because otherwise he will just toss me out. So let's see what happened, if he uh, finds me or not. Oh, the cook is not here. So if I take P, I can pick up. I pick up this meat, and I think I should. I think I should pick up this pan, but it's full of stuff. Uh, uh, I don't remember what to do with the stew, really. But I open the door here first. And then I need to pick up this uh, meat or fish or whatever it is, but I cannot do that because that bird is there. So I just stamp on this plank until it flies away, and maybe now... No. Maybe now I can pick it up. Yep. And then I think I should put the meat or the fish inside the stew. Uh, let's try to put the... Give the fish to the stew. Can I do that? No. Uh, give the use the fish, maybe. With the stew. Yes, that works, and then I can pick it up. And then it's stewed fish. And I think I can do the same for the meat, maybe. Let's try with a hunk of meat. And then pick it up, and then it's stewed meat. And then, how do I get the stew out of the pot? Uh, ah, here's a pot. Okay, I pick. Yes, that's the one. I, I remember that I should get a pot somehow, uh, because I need to use it later. So this is the pot, and I got the fish, and I got the meat, and uh, I don't know if I should do anything with the grog. Uh, maybe not yet, no. Because I should carry the grog in the pot or something like that. Here comes the chef. So, uh, you need to go into the kitchen when the chef is out, otherwise he will kick you out. So, let's go head out. So first I'm gonna head into town, uh, just to show around how the town looks like. And then we are going to uh, head out to Malay Island as a whole and see how that looks like. Uh, and here the disk swapping begins. Uh, so insert disk tree. Let's see. So this is uh, how it was back in the days. So you needed to swap disks and it read uh, part of the disk into memory and then you needed another disk to... Yeah. I think if you have... Oh, here's another cutscene. Uh, this is a really nice cutscene. Uh, this is the ghost ship of uh, Pirate Legend. And uh, you will see all the ghosts in here. As I said, I think that if you upgrade to uh, 1 meg of memory instead of uh, 512k, the disk swapping might... Lo it might be less disk swapping because it might be possible that it's keeping some of the data in memory. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's just a guess I have. Uh, or maybe it's just using uh, more memory to draw better graphics. One possibility. This is really fun. Really funny conversation. Uh, I feel so lucky that you happened to capture my ship that murdered me and everyone on board. <laughs> yes sir, lucky. <laughs> 
then he just goes along with it and say, Oh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> So now they are of course talking about me and uh, me as a pirate and they think that I am a problem. I come out from Scum Bar and let's walk up to town to see how it looks like. Uh, these are just some houses, you cannot go into any of them. Uh, you have to go to the archway and insert disc 2. So disc 2 is this one. So I have been uh, recording for uh, half an hour now and my goal is to make this video about one hour long uh, because it's a play, not playthrough, but uh, you know showing off a game so it takes longer time than you know I cannot cut it down in the same way as I can with uh, my hardware videos. Uh, I can talk to this guy and he's gonna try to sell me a map. You have a cousin named Sven, and this is a sort of code. So, if you say no, I don't, I think he just tells you to shut off and not disturb him. But if you say that I have a barber named Dominic, then it works. Um, and if you click the wrong thing here, you can always go back to him and he will ask you the same question again. So, again, you cannot mess this up. And here he's trying to sell me a treasure map, and I need that treasure map for the treasure hunting uh, test for the three trials. And it ha costs a uh, hundred um, or one hundred pieces of eight, and I don't have that kind of money, so I need to get it first. Uh, and here you can uh, choose uh, whatever. Um, he will just uh, say that, or oh, probably you don't have the money. So, if I go further along here, I get to these circus people uh, that are also pirates. I can talk to them. And they are very proud of this little pet rat here. Uh, so I can say, hey, nice rat. And he says, oh, you like rats too. And he becomes very friendly with you, you while you say, um, how can you stand near this vermin? He becomes very hostile. Or... Uh, yeah, uh, and he says like, oh, but I like rats, uh, how can you say it? And then if you click on this one, you can always come back to him later and say, oh, I'm sorry for what I said earlier. So you can always apologize and then you are back to starting position. So you cannot screw up this conversation either. And here there are uh, l no music, I think. No, there are no background music. I love rats. Yes, I do. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm uh, <laughs> looking a bit confused. It's because I'm uh, looking at the recording levels uh, for the sound and microphone at the same time as I'm playing this game. Uh, because I don't want my microphone to be uh, too loud and I don't want the music to be too loud and I don't want the microphone to cut off so I'm playing the game and looking at the VU meters for the sound uh, simultaneously. Uh, so uh, you can get a paper from these guys uh, which are minutes of meeting from the PTA and it seems uh, very, you know, unimportant at the time, but uh, you need to use it later on. 
So now when the small talk is over, I can ask him about this sneaky uh, looking guy and of course they mean this guy that uh, could uh, I could buy the map from, so I can ask about him and here I can uh, kind of get more information. minutes of meetings of the uh, Meli Island PTA Parent Teacher Association so that's again it's a joke within the game uh, because of course PTAs didn't exist uh, back in the pirate era but it's something they threw in there just for fun Uh, yes, and here you get some money as well. Uh, so I think it, this is the reason why you need uh, the PTA paper. Because they say it's worthless and you wouldn't uh, get it even if you got paid. And then I said, no, but I take one if you give me two pieces of eight. So I, get, I kind of uh, trick them to get money for the, the worthless piece of paper. And I need this, uh, these two pieces of eight later. So uh, now I have uh, the minutes of meeting here and I have two pieces of eight and I can go to the door here and I can open it. <coughs> and there are actually uh, newer versions of this game with uh, much better graphics. So I uh, saw for example on YouTube someone uh, uh, someone playing this, but it was, you know, for more than Windows. It's, it was, uh, it's a very nice animation, but it's not the original. So here I am in this uh, Voodoo Doctor, uh, Voodoo Doctor uh, home, Voodoo Doctor office, and uh, this girl will tell me lots of creepy stuff. Uh, I would like to say I'm a mighty pirate, yes, I'm a mighty pirate, and she's stopped me, uh, I couldn't say that, uh, so she's uh, trying to guess my name now, and she guessed right, Guybrush Threepwood. So I can say, amazing, you know any other tricks or lucky guess, and these two leads to the, to the same. Uh, it, it, it carries on, on in the same way. And I will get a hint of where this game is going. Uh, if I want. Uh, but that's not the main reason why I'm here. So here, if I click here, I can get the preview of uh, what the game is going to be like. And uh, if I click here, I don't. So let's get a little preview. Uh, it's uh, nothing graphical, but uh, she will tell me uh, sort of what will happen. So that's uh, that's uh, nice. Uh, and you will see this big pot coming up in the middle, and it's actually a skull. Uh, it's sort of the things you would have guessed already since this is a pirate game um, and the game is called The Secret of Monkey Island so of course she's gonna talk about giant monkeys uh, that sort of things And once again, very catchy music. And it 
time is right now. Um, I know my purpose. Come and see me. I will let you. So you you don't get the full preview. You know that you are going on a long voyage. Uh, you know that you are seeing a giant monkey going inside a giant monkey. But you don't really know what that means. It could just be, you know, some history that the uh, Doctor is making up. Uh, and Or it could be something that you're going to do. Uh, there's a chicken. I need to pick it up. And here are lots of other things, but I cannot pick up any of it, because uh, Guybrush don't want to uh, mess with his creepy voodoo stuff, as he expresses. He don't want to touch it, so I'll just uh, open the door and go out. So, uh, if I go here... Uh, this uh, archway, I come to the second part of town. There is a little alley to the left there, but I cannot enter it. It's just there for show. Here's another door uh, leading to a little shop. And uh, someone is uh, saying pst, pst. Uh, So uh, I'll go there later. Uh, but this shop owner is really something else. Uh, it's a sign here. I can look at it like that. Ring bell for service. Uh, I can also try to steal stuff. So here's a sword and I really need a sword. So if I pick up the sword and of course I need a shovel to get the, um, uh, the treasure, dig up the treasure later. So I will pick up the shovel. Uh, but if I try to leave without making a noise, he will come back just in the nick of time. And, uh, like, so, yeah. And <laughs> he is really funny. I can ask for how much he wants. Uh, I think it's 100. Yeah, it's 100 pieces of eight. And I don't have enough money. And then he will say something really, yeah, figure. What else do you want to waste my time with? <laughs> I, I really wish I could tell people that sometimes. Uh, and I need to return the shovel because otherwise he will not let me return. Uh, I He will not let me uh, leave the shop. If I try to leave the shop without returning the items, he will just say, aha, again, and I need to walk back to the counter. So I really... Um, I really need to leave all the stuff. I cannot uh, steal anything from here, even though one of the one of the quests are uh, the mo uh, art of thievery so yeah uh, 75 pieces of eight i don't have that much then you better go put it back yeah so and up there uh, where guy barsh is just walking is the safe and uh, i think you need to break into the safe some time later in the game. I'm not sure. I have a vague memory of opening the safe, but I could just be confusing it with another game. Uh, so now I can leave the shop. And I can go in here uh, where someone says, Psst. <coughs> And here I will meet the sneaky sheriff of the town. So... He uh, looks like a good guy in the beginning. Uh, but he, you will later see that he is uh, secretly teaming up with the uh, bad guys. 
So now he will try to lecture me about uh, he keeping his eyes on me and that uh, sort of things. <laughs> Peep wood. Three wood. Guybrush, three wood. Whatever your name is. <laughs> yeah. So now I can go out again because there is nothing to see here in the alley. There is a poster you can look at, but nothing really significant. And uh, if you go all the way over here, here is a prison that you can enter. And there is another archway there to the left and that leads to the governor's mansion. Uh, but we are not ready to go there just yet. Um, I need to do some other things first. I can. Uh, talk to this guy here and he really hates the sheriff as well victim of society ah. <laughs> so he has a uh, very bad breath and I need to solve that somehow. I have two pieces of eight. Um, let's see. Let's see uh, if the shop owner has anything ba against bad breath. Uh, but after that I really need to leave the town because uh, <laughs> I got my eyes on you boys. Steal anything and I'll break your legs. So now I, c I will not try to steal anything. I will simply talk to him. And say, breath mint. I could really use a breath mint. You're telling me? Here, take one. Please. Take a whole roll. That will be one piece of eight. So, now that I have a whole roll of breath mints, I can go back to the prisoner and talk to him. But I really need a 100 uh, piece of eight for the sword. And I need... Um, 75 piece of eight for the shovel to dig up the treasure later so i really need to find that money somehow and this is the church you can go in uh, but nothing is really happening in there as far as i remember i can maybe look at it later but i really don't remember anything significant happening there well i have uh, give a uh, breath mints to the prisoner. Ooh, Grogomint! <laughs> of course it's Grogomint, it's a pirate game after all. <laughs> so I can uh, talk bad about the sheriff or I can ask if he if I can get him anything and he will say I don't need anything I just want to get out and you can try giving him food and fish and everything but he won't take it uh, uh, or you can say that we're gonna get you out and once again he's gonna uh, start telling about how bad the sheriff is oh no he didn't hmm. maybe I should uh, tell him that the sheriff is a jerk The meanest man on Melee Island. Um, and guess who is listening to all of this? Uh oh, here he comes. And he suspects that the uh, governor's sudden death has something to do with the sheriff. And of course the sheriff uh, doesn't want to hear any of it.
<laughs> monkey boy. And he will gladly lock me up, but uh, of course you cannot progress in the game if he locks you up. And uh, there is no way he can uh, lock you up because uh, the conversation engine in the game won't let you progress to that point. You see what I have to put up with. Yeah. So I will walk out here. And before I uh, leave the city, I'm gonna make a save uh, point because well, if uh, I I have uh, lots of stuff in my inventory now, and if the power goes out or anything. Uh, I will have to start over, so let's see how to make a save a copy of the game. It should uh, be here. Uh, for uh, saving the game, it's F5, so let's see. Oops. Come on, stay on. So, so F5, let's see. And insert save or load game disk. So I take the game disk out and I put in my Amiga formatted uh, save disk. And I press save and let's see what happens. It should come a box where I can uh, give a name to the save file. Yep. And I will call it save. Oh, ten. What date is it today? It's the seventh. So oh seven. So yeah, and uh, enter, and then okay. Now it's saving, and while it's saving, I'm gonna refill my coffee cup. So here, cheers. Oh, it's done saving already, so that was quick. Uh, and now, uh, now the machine is holding uh, the game in memory because I just have the save uh, floppy in there and all of the game floppies are out, so it uh, should probably tell me to put in a floppy. Uh, when I go to get the other items uh, once I left town. So, yeah. I will not go to the governor's mansion uh, because I will do that later on. I will go and uh, try to get a sword and a shovel first. So, I need to go all the way out here and all the way back to the look up, uh, lookout uh, point, uh, in fact. So, to the archway here. And all the way back, and this is the scum bar. I don't need to go to scum bar again. And up to the cliff side, and uh, at the cliff side is the lookout. And the funny thing about the lookup is, you see here, well, it's not very obvious because of the low uh, resolution, but he has very thick uh, glasses, so he's nearly blind, but still he's uh, working as a lookout. Uh, lookout. Uh, so that's <laughs> once again uh, a joke in the game. Okay, uh, insert disk 2, this one. So uh, it's, uh, yep, here it is. And this is uh, Melee Island. 
Uh, and if you hover over places, you see here is a clearing, here is a fork in the road, uh, here are lights, here is a bridge, a house, it doesn't really say. And here is, uh, you cannot really see what's here because it will uh, show itself later. Here is a shore, here is an island, but where we need to go now is to the clearing. Because, sorry, we need to uh, visit some uh, circus people of everything. And disc 3. So, yeah, lots of uh, disc swapping back in the days. Where disc 3 is this one? Yeah, here is their little. Uh, it's a little clearing in the forest, uh, opening in the forest. And here is their circus tent that I need to enter. And in the modern game or the remake of uh, the Mystery on Monkey Island, these guys are. Talking, they are talking a lot here as well, but it's dubbed so you don't need to read it. But here it's just music, and you need to read the conversation. And basically, they want to use the cannon that is uh, in the right corner, but they are too scared to actually be in the cannon themselves. So that's where I come in. I can just ask anything here to uh, get them their attention. I can say that this place has a bathroom and they will just run over. Uh, I could say anything. Alfredo and Bill. So, uh, the trick here is that you need to get money out of them. Because I need money to buy the sword and to buy the shovel uh, at the shop later. So, you really need to negotiate with them uh, to get money. And I think 475 is the maximum limit or something like that. So they go to the maximum limit uh, directly here, but I think in some cases you have to negotiate it up, I'm not really sure. Uh, so I say, yeah, it sounds good. And incidentally, that's exactly the amount of money you will need uh, for the entire game. And uh, of course I have a helmet. And you could probably lie to them and say, of course I have a helmet, but as a proof they want to see the helmet, uh, they want to inspect it, so you really need to get that pot uh, from the kitchen before, because that's what you're going to use as a helmet, uh, so you need to give the pot to them. <laughs> it works! I'm so relieved! <laughs> I forgot all about this, but the text is upside down. So here it says, uh, I'm bobbing, are you my mother or where's my helmet? Well, I will go with this one, it sounds more fun. He's alright, hooray! <laughs> Uh, and now I think they will start fighting about uh, who will use the cannon next. 
because they saw that it was safe, they just need to practice their aim, so they don't aim at the pillar. And uh, there they are fighting, and they will uh, pay me my 478 or whatever the sum was. So now I have uh, 478 uh, plus the two pieces of eight I got from taking the minutes of meeting minus the one piece of eight for buying the roll of mint. So 479 pieces of eight altogether. And now I can go and buy a sword and a shovel. And once I have uh, the sword I need to go to the sword master to uh, prove myself. So let's go to the village again. Uh, oh, my record time is uh, one hour now. So I guess I will pause here and uh, the rest will be in uh, another video because I don't want to make the episodes longer than one hour even if it's a kind of a game uh, walkthrough. Uh, so yeah, uh, see you in the next part of the Secret of Monkey Island then. See ya!